Coach Nick here, and welcome to B-Ball Breakdown. I am pleased to have Jay Wright of Villanova with us to talk a little bit about fundamentals at the George Raveling uh, Coaching for Success Academy. So fantastic speech you just gave us. What's the origin of your four-out-one-in offense? Well, it really came from when we were at Hofstra University and uh, we, were, we were trying to recruit big guys and we realized we weren't getting the quality of big guys we needed, but we had some good guards, so we said, hey, let's go, let's go play with the best players regardless of position, and they were, they were all guards, so we, we went with it and had some success, and we stuck with it. So were, did you have any trepidation about it, like, oh, my God, what we gonna, this is not going to work, or did, you, did it instantly click and you're like, this is it? Oh, no, I was worried about it, and, and, we, and we, had some, we, you know, we had some failures early. Um, and it was just something we kind of toyed with, but right away, once we started – seeing that we had the five best players on the court, even though they weren't, they didn't fit positions, they were the best part. We, we saw it was going to work. Um, we, just, we just had to refine it some. Uh, and then it didn't become an issue as much because was it such an advantage on the offensive end that you could mitigate any kind of defensive size issues? It really did. Uh, you know, today we talked about the offensive end of it, which is actually the easy part. You know, if you... If you've got five skilled players out there, offense is, is easier. Uh, the, the difficult part is when you're playing undersized defensively, how you play, you know. Uh, and so there's, there's, there's a, a lot to that. But you've you got to have tough guys, and you've got to have guys committed to playing inside, undersized, and you've got to have some schemes knowing that people are going to try to post you up. Um, you talked a little bit about, or you showed a lot of interesting um, options out of your offense. How much of it is called versus sort of flow, motion, and is there a golden ratio when you're out there that you want to maybe stay out of the way and not call plays? Yeah, a, a lot of it is concepts. So when, when, when we're really clicking, uh, it's, it's all uh, read and react, and it's all concepts when things are going well. Um, but when, when we need to, we will call the plays, but the plays are still the concepts. When, when we call the play, it's more – about getting specific players in a ball screen or getting specific players in screening action and then getting other players on the weak side creating the movement. When we're clicking, we don't care who does it, and, and everyone just fills their spots. You talked a little bit about um, how hard it is when you get these great players first into your program. With one specific skill on offense, when, when they catch the ball, what they like to do, can you elaborate a little bit more about what the, the difficulties is and what that is that you notice when they come in? Yeah, we, we use a, a philosophy we call catch to shoot. Uh, another term for that is to play off your jump shot. So um, we, we want our guys to, to understand that the most open they will ever be is when they first catch the ball. So – we want them to be thinking about their shot before they catch the ball. And, and, um, and, and that we feel like that gives them the highest rate of, of making shots. Um, but when we get guys, the first thing they usually look to do when they catch the ball is dribble it. So if they catch the ball and they're open and they dribble it, and then they try to look for their shot after they dribble it, after each dribble, the defense is just getting closer and closer, not just the, the on-ball defense, but the help side defense is getting closer. So it, it takes away your drive opportunities. But if the first thing you do when you catch it is put it in your shooting pocket and look to shoot it, the weak side defense is going away from you because they're looking to box out their man because they think you're going to shoot. The man on you is coming towards you, which enables you to go by him. So it, it, it sounds simple, but the habits of most players are to catch and dribble or catch and hold. And so it takes a lot of repetition and some time to, to get them out of those habits. Do you focus on the catch with a, a hop or a one-two or whatever they're comfortable with? Always a one-two step because we, we, we want the guys to be able to pivot off of either foot. We want them to pivot off their right foot, pivot off their left foot because there's situations in the game where you can't dictate what your pivot foot is. You know, if, if you're coming to catch a pass to shoot the ball, you can, in your mind, realize, all right, my inside foot, or I'm going to hop behind if I want to hop behind. But there's times where you're cutting to the basket and you catch a pass, mm -hmm. and now you're caught on your right foot. If you can't pivot off that foot, you can't make a play. Mm -hmm. So we spend a lot of time pivoting off both feet. Uh, do the players r respond to that, or do they feel like, oh, this, is so, this is, seems, it seems so basic? Um, that's a great question. Um, 
I think now they uh, <laughs> we've had some success that, that, that we have pretty good guys that they, they buy in right away. But um, initially, in our Hofstra days, I, I could see guys thinking like, you know, we're, we're spending a lot of time on just basic footwork or just basic pivot foot. I don't think it's something they love, but I do think it's something that they realize the benefits of. Last question. You got a beautiful offense. It's working man to man. They're killing it. They go zone. What happens? We want to run our man to man offense against zone. And, and again, just, just understand the concepts of the zone. So uh, most teams go to their zone defense because they don't want to guard your man to man offense. So we want to stay in our man offense, but understand what the zone's doing. So when we're running the same offense, but we're looking for different things because we understand what the zone's doing. I mean, the concept might be that you want to make the zone kind of play man-to-man -man almost, right? Exactly. And, and really, we, we don't care if they play man or they play zone, but we just, we just, when we come off ball screens, we want guys to come off to score, right? If, you, if you're coming off, if you're running a different offense, you know, that's because they went zone. They, in, in, in one sense, they've already won. Um, if we run ball screen against a man-to-man -man and we want guys to come off ball screens to score, then if we go against zone, we want them to do the same thing so they don't feel like that defense changed mm -hmm. their aggressiveness or what they do. Fantastic stuff and a great uh, clinic that you showed us today. And don't forget, sports fans, at B-Ball Breakdown, we're not a channel, we're a conversation. You win. You win, coach. We win.